Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm sharing my recipe for homemade dinner rolls that are perfect for Thanksgiving. Let's face it, we all like to up our cooking game for the big holidays, and this is one way you can do that with the ever important dinner roll. So this Thanksgiving, skip the store-bought ones, hit the subscribe button, and let's get baking. This is a really easy recipe that you can make within about two and a half to three hours start to finish. But because I know how hectic things can get on Thanksgiving day, you can actually make this dough up to three days in advance and refrigerate it. And I'll explain more on that uh, as we go along. But right now let's go over the ingredients. You're going to need two cups warm water, one tablespoon active dry yeast, one tablespoon sugar, two teaspoons kosher salt, one tablespoon olive oil, and five and a half cups all-purpose flour. I'm also going to sprinkle just a little bit of a flaky sea salt on top just to kind of up the wow factor. You can also use poppy seeds, but that's optional. And then I'm going to make an egg wash, and for that all you need is one egg and about a tablespoon of milk or water. Either works just the same. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using my stand mixer with a dough hook, but you can also do this by hand. First, I'm going to put two cups lukewarm water in my mixing bowl. You don't want it too hot because it'll kill the yeast. You just want it warm to the touch. I'll add the active dry yeast and the sugar and mix it just enough to where it dissolves. Then I'm going to let it stand for five minutes. If it doesn't get frothy like this, then you've got some expired yeast, so throw it away and get some fresh one. This one, however, is perfect, so I'm going to mix in the kosher salt and one tablespoon olive oil and give it a quick stir. Then I'm going to add five cups of flour to it, leaving the remaining flour for later. And I'm going to set the mixer to low speed. Once it's fully mixed, I'm going to increase the speed to medium-low and add in the remaining flour just a couple of tablespoons at a time. The reason I'm doing it like this is because I may not need it all or I may need more. What I'm looking for is for the dough to form a ball that is tacky but not sticky. Now I'm going to put plenty of flour onto a clean, flat surface and place my dough on there so I can begin kneading by hand. So I'm going to continue to knead this until it's no longer quite as sticky. There's no danger of over kneading when you do this by hand. And that should be pretty good right there. Looks great. Once it's a nice smooth consistency, I'll place it in an oiled bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. There's all sorts of ways you can make your dinner rolls a little fancier. For instance, I wanted to put in some freshly chopped rosemary because I had rosemary growing in my garden this year, but it just didn't survive the Arizona heat this summer, which I thought was kind of odd because I see rosemary growing in these giant bushes when I take my dog for a walk. In fact, I was tempted to clip some were it not for the fact that I see what dogs do to those bushes. And as it turns out, the rosemary that is used in landscaping is actually different from the rosemary that we use in cooking, so it all worked out for the best because heaven knows I wouldn't want to poison anyone. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a warm place and uh, let it rise for about an hour. The dough easily doubled in size in that time, but depending on where you live, you may need to allow more rising time. Now I'm going to punch the dough and quickly knead it on a lightly floured surface to form a smooth ball, but I won't be adding any more flour than this. If you were planning on making your dough in advance, it's at this point that you would take it, wrap it tightly in plastic wrap, and put it in the refrigerator for up to three days. Then when you're ready to use it, you just take it out, let it come to room temperature on its own, and then you could start working with it. But since I'm going to be making these rolls today, I'm just going to continue on. I'm going to cut my dough into equal portions that are going to become my individual rolls. 
to do that, I simply cut the dough in half and then continue to cut those pieces in half and so on. Those look pretty equally portioned, so now I'm just gonna make them into my rolls. With all the pieces equally portioned, you roll them into balls. You can do this however you'd like, just make sure the top is smooth. I'm just putting the ugly side on bottom. Before placing them onto a cookie sheet, lightly grease it. You can even sprinkle a little cornmeal onto the greased cookie sheet, but this is optional. Then you have to decide if you want these to be pull-apart rolls or you want them to stand perfectly on their own because that will determine how closely you place them. I want these to be pull-apart rolls, so I'm putting them almost to where they're touching each other because they're going to rise and get bigger. If you want them to stand alone, you would separate them and leave at least an inch between your rolls. Once you've got them set, cover them once again and let them rise in a warm place half an hour more. You can see that they really grew. Now if you want to dress them up a bit, you can cut a slice across the top with a sharp knife or just leave them alone. I'll do it both ways so you can decide for yourself. Then I'm going to brush an egg wash over them. This is just one egg with about a tablespoon of milk whisked together. But you can also use water instead of milk. And you want to lightly brush the egg wash over the top of each roll, being careful not to puncture them. I'll take some flaky sea salt and sprinkle a tiny bit over the top because again, we're trying to increase the wow factor. And you can also do this with poppy seeds if you prefer. And finally, we can bake them in the oven at 425 for 10 to 15 minutes until they're golden brown. Oh, wow, that smells good. Look at that. These dinner rolls came out so perfect. I can already tell they're really soft on the inside just by what it does when I press down on them. And also the two different options, the one with the slit cut across and the ones left plain are really both beautiful. Uh, right now though, I wanna cut into one of them so we can see how light and fluffy they are on the inside. You can see how that would be so perfect for Thanksgiving because it's just gonna soak up the gravy or whatever other goodness you have on your plate. But right now, I'm just gonna put some butter on it. And we'll give it a try. Mmm. There is nothing like homemade rolls. If you make these for Thanksgiving, they will be a hit. Thanks so much for checking out my video. I'll be sharing more recipes perfect for Thanksgiving in the weeks to come. So be sure to subscribe, like, and click the notification bell so you don't miss them. You can also follow me at Marcy Inspired on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, blessings from my kitchen to yours.